What The Witcher 3 achieved four years ago remains an incredible feat. It's the best example of world building I've seen this generation, from the idyllic white orchard to the bustle of Novigrad. It's crammed with detail. And yet, somehow, developers Sabre Interactive and CD Projekt Red are genuinely delivering something I thought impossible. A Switch conversion now exists. A complete edition that crams every DLC and upgrade into a 32GB install. It's honestly the most technically ambitious game I've tested on the system since it launched, and in this final release, we can at last see how it stacks up. How does it compare against PS4? And what about against PC at low settings? What of its loading times? And above all, does Portable Play's frame rate hold up? Let's find out. I'll cut to the chase here. If you're looking for the big TV experience, other better options are clearly out there. This footage is docked play, a simply fine take on the experience given it's running on a relatively lightweight Tegra X1 chipset. It's still remarkable how much is being squeezed from the machine though. Supposing you haven't played The Witcher 3 yet, but own a Switch, you'll find it acceptable as a first viewing of the world. But look at this PS4 footage hitting a native 1920x1080 and yeah, it's in another league in clarity. In density of foliage and in the way terrain renders to the far corners, that divide in power spec is writ large here. Switch, played docked at least, shows how The Witcher 3 might have been trimmed into shape, perhaps closer to a last gen machine where 1280x720 was so often the target. It's fascinating to see how it comes together though. Indeed, Sabre re encodes all video files at a lower bitrate to suit this at 720p helping fit everything on that 32GB cartridge. It's really no problem for the portable experience of course, but on the big screen, compression artifacts do tend to show up there, which is a shame. The scaling in actual gameplay is also something you'll have to get used to. To put some numbers on it, it's a dynamic 1280x720 in docked play, but to my testing, I get 960x540 as the lowest figure it can drop to, in this case panning past the city in Toussaint. Portable Play is, in all honesty, the star of the show. It's where Sabre and CDPR's work comes together, a justified use of the Switch. Handheld Play works the same as Docked, a dynamic pixel cam that adjusts based on load. Here Switch uses 960x540 as the top number, but drops steeply where it needs to. Pick a busy street in Novigrad for example, and the lowest reading comes in at 810x546. It is nicely hidden overall on that 6 inch display in fairness, and it's a less glaring drop than say the res hits you'll notice while playing on a big TV. It's simply much better suited for portable play. Regardless of how you play, there are a swathe of highlights to this one, as well as a couple of drawbacks. The big plus to start is easily the NPC count. No kidding, CDPR told me ahead of release that it's the same as PS4 or close to it, and it's easy to back that up. Around the central square, Novigrad is teeming with townsfolk, guards and entertainment. Move over to PS4 and there's barely a difference to the density of this spot, just going by eye. Sure fade in will be different on Switch, but the rendering range on NPCs is generous enough to cram everyone in. The only snag really is the frame rate on characters is halved towards the distance. So you'll notice these bandits for example on horseback kind of jutting along on the horizon there. But regardless, the point is, even in portable mode it hits the same NPC count which makes sense given it is a CP focused task and the clocks they put either way. Now it pays the price, obviously in performance, which I'll cover later, but it's quite a technical feat. The other highlight for me is the water. Just look at it. This is a standout achievement on Switch and I'm hard pressed to find more realistic water in another Switch game. Maybe you can suggest otherwise in the comments, but to my eye this is about as good as I've seen. And I say that not only because we do get proper water ripple physics on the surface, but also great looking shaders while diving underneath it. The other big surprise here is that yes, screen space reflections makes the cut, Miraculously, this works much like the other big consoles, creating a reflection based on the visual data framed by the camera. You'll get the same artifacts as any other console, where the illusion breaks a little towards the edges. Still, it creates a beautiful mirror image, whether that's in the White Orchard or the still rivers of Toussaint. 
The rest of the visual features speak for themselves. Post effects wise, you have the works too. A unique form of ambient occlusion is included on Switch. There's light shafts, two toggles for motion blur in the menus, plus a form of anti-aliasing. You get the option to turn off the blur effects at least, just like any other console, but in my experience, it really does help to reduce the flicker on movement, the temporal aliasing if you like, that can crop up on visually noisy bits of the screen. As an aside, you even get object physics and enemy decapitations, which genuinely makes this come across as a complete package. So, to a few downsides. For our first experience of The Witcher 3, these are some limits you'll have to bear in mind. The first is pop-in. Often it is brilliantly handled, but Switch does have limits in how quickly it can draw everything in. The big trouble spot is cutscenes. Fast camera cuts overwhelm the system, and the way geometry flickers in and out can be pretty glaring. Then there's the open world stuff near Novigrad. Approaching the center, note the house walls on the right are completely missing. Different runs will get different results, but it shows Switch is sometimes fighting an uphill battle. The second big downside is, well, compression. I've talked on the lower FMV bitrate in order to fit everything to a 32GB cartridge, but the same goes for textures and sound. Texture mapping and filtering are notably low quality. A form of trilinear filtering is used which adds to the generally blurry look, but the assets themselves are essentially PC's low setting. Playing portably, it's less of an issue, hidden by the smaller screen and lower rendering resolutions. This is the split in the road as to whether you can accept it. For docked playback, it will stick out, but on the move, these assets do a good enough job. The other issue though is audio compression. For dialogue, music and sounds, there is a lower bitrate file used here compared to PS4. Play with earphones on and you might catch it, but it's a nitpick really, and thankfully a step up from the very compressed audio in Dark Souls Remastered. If he wishes to guard her name a secret, he need not reveal it. You I do not know, sir, nor seem you a knight, yet still I am profoundly grateful, nay, indebted to you for your sucker. Finally, a quick word on image quality in general. Docked or portable, it looks serviceable enough. There is a big but here though, the anti-aliasing can struggle. The Toussaint area, to my eyes anyway, looks better than the main game, but it's marred by some of the worst cases of stair-stepping. Its colour palette and the chalk white staircases tend to bring out more visual noise, and the method used, presumably FXAA, just isn't catching it. An overview of the city shows it really well. The overall native res drops to a low here, which doesn't help, and you're left with a lot of shimmer which goes untouched. A gorgeous area, no doubt, but the final image isn't always a looker. So, to recap, Witcher 3 on Switch nails it with a high NPC count, water physics, a strong post-effects suite, and very nicely optimized LODs in the Toussaint area. The downsides? These are more an issue for docked play, but there's popping in spots, low-grade assets, and issues with aliasing. As a whole, it still holds together on the visual front, but all the better if you're going purely handheld to disguise those issues. On that point, you can see a comparison between docked and portable play doesn't degrade any settings further. There's a potential drop in plant draw, otherwise though, everything stays the same, besides resolution, from shadow LEDs to effects quality. That's great news if you're planning on making the most of Switch here. Sabre and CDPR appear to have targeted the handheld experience first, and then scaled up to the TV mode where viable. In that sense, I do wish we'd gotten some form of cloud save sharing on Switch with the PC version. We saw it first in Divinity Original Sin 2, a game that changed my view of how Switch can be used. It really turned the console into an extension of the home experience. Having your save transfer from Switch to Steam or GOG to enjoy truly maxed out visuals would have been such a perfect fit for this game. As a reference point of what we're missing on the big screen, here's the base PS4 by comparison. There's no end to the differences. 1080p drops to a dynamic 720p on Switch for one. Shadows, textures and notably LODs are altered, and panning around the outskirts of Novigrad, you can see foliage density is pruned back significantly. It's all reined in, creating a generally less filled out world, at a distance anyway, on Switch. It's amazing what's achieved on a smaller less powerful system, 
but the trade-off to make it happen can't be overlooked. PS4 shows us what we want to be playing on the TV at home, whereas Switch gives its best effort given the power spec. A more flattering comparison is against PC, set to 720p with all settings on low. There's an interesting test here to see how custom tailored the game is for Switch. First off, there's very similar texture mapping and filtering quality here, and likewise for shadows, notably the way the cascade rolls across as we approach the walls of Novigrad. Grass draw and shading are better on PC to my eye, but it's surprising how fleshed out Switch looks on a ground level. The only real snag that I can see is, like the demo build we tested months back, it appears grass doesn't animate like it does on PC. Here's an early shot in the build up to the Griffin battle. It's static, which is a strange cutback. I mean, put it this way, water, object physics, and even decapitations make the cut and switch, but for some reason swaying grass is removed. Very strange. It goes to show how bespoke this build is. On balance, this is the nearest setting officially possible on PC without making use of mods. All told though, Novigrad holds up convincingly. Lods on the marketplace ahead are reined in, and we're missing some tree detailing to the sides, but otherwise, it's very close. It's a shame pop-in is an issue at points on Switch, where PC just plows straight through without any issue, but clearly this is the baseline setting the developers worked from, just to get it running at all. The final comparison point is on loading times. For this test, I've dragged the base PS4 back in. It's running from the stock mechanical drive compared to a 64GB SanDisk microSD on Switch, and really, that's a necessity for installing such a large game. Forgive the fast forward to get to the point here, but loading my save to Crookback Bog, each console takes over a minute to get to running gameplay. It's 1 minute 2 seconds on PS4, whereas Switch takes a while longer, counting it at 1 minute 17 seconds. So that's around a 25% extra wait. It's not a huge issue once loaded, but if you plan on using the fast traveling feature, expect to see a lot of that loading screen, and for it to be a test of your patience. A final word on performance. Running Switch docked is the smoother, high frame rate way to play. It's still got plenty of glaring lurches down, as I'll cover, but as a baseline, the game is overall about as well tailored for the system as you could hope. I've got to say, a bulk of the time in areas like Velen, at least outside towns, this is a 30fps experience with some frame time spikes to 16 milliseconds. The 30fps cap isn't perfectly frame paced then, but it's not enough to distract. Docked play is solid, until you get to places like Novigrad, shown here, where you can expect dips into the 20fps range. So it goes as well for portable play. We're looking at 30fps, but when taxed in stress points, it'll go into the 20s. Now in fairness, the drops in the same Novigrad runaround aren't as noticeable on the smaller screen, which is just as well given we can see some big hits, though the turnout is still impressive overall. You get all the NPCs in one spot at the same density as docked. The crucial test here is how the two compare side by side, especially in cutscenes where everything is perfectly matched in content. It's really here that the drops are noticeable, well into the 10-20fps to 20 FPS range once the GPU is pushed with alpha effects. This is thankfully not the state of gameplay. 20-30fps to 30 FPS is the range you can expect in Novigrad for example. Interestingly, neither side is markedly worse. This spot is a great go-to for CPU performance testing, with so many draw calls and AI. And the fact is, the reading is generally quite close between them. This is very much unlike the famous Crookback Bog test. The GPU is the bottleneck in this case, with so much alpha on screen. Again, I will stress these are the absolute worst cases, but it shows portable play running at an average of 3 to 4 FPS lower across the board. It's clearly pushing Switch in handheld mode, and with a correspondingly lower reading. Anything GPU related then is an issue for the lower clock speeds in this mode. On balance, it's acceptable but far from ideal. I will say turning off post-processing in the menus doesn't help for either side. It'd be curious though to see if overclocking the switch could help matters though. Clearly we're GPU bottleneck for a bulk of these areas, and it's a point we'll be looking into with a future video. To end it on a more upbeat note though, 
The Toussaint area is amazing for how smoothly it runs, given all the detail packed into such a small space. It speaks to the incredible optimization work put into this expansion, and all that works in favor of Switch. Can't get used to the way you knights talk. Saber and CDPR hit an impressive bar of quality here. Performance is an issue here, no doubt about that, but on balance, it holds 30 FPS more often than I expected. The Witcher 3 Complete Edition does everything it can to be playable, while somehow still packing a visual punch. Graphical features like reflections, light shafts, water physics, and even a high NPC count are incredible to see on a handheld. The only thing I could possibly ask for here is a Divinity Original Sin 2 style cloud sharing with the PC version, to carry on with the best looking version when you get back home. It's hard to recommend playing this docked under a TV, but in the portable space, it's truly untouchable. If you're after the biggest technical showcase on the Switch, this might just be it. But that's all I have for today. If you did find this analysis useful or insightful in any way, please let me know by liking or even subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a pristine, high quality version of this video file, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.